Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking all about snaps, adding snaps with your rivet setters. So I have been using a lot of snaps lately. Um, these are two of my free wallets. These can both be found on the YouTube channel, the Daybreak and the Sydney, and they both um, can use this kind of a snap. So the Daybreak is going to need a snap of some kind. You don't have to have a rivet setter for this. You can use a regular magnetic snap, and Sydney has an optional snap closure. But if you already have a rivet setter because you've been setting rivets like I have, that was the whole reason in buying a rivet setter, Maybe you want to get into snaps and you just don't know where to get started. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through a couple of different style snaps and then we're gonna get in depth into these snaps right here and how to add those on. It can be a little bit overwhelming and a little confusing to know exactly where to start. How do I know what dies to get? What kind of snaps to get? How do I know what goes where? So hopefully this will be a, um, a good tutorial for you or it will just be a great place for you to come back and refer to whenever you are putting in a snap. I will tell you, I do have both um, rivet setters. I have a gold star and I have a cam snap. I'm gonna show you both of them today. I'll do one at a time so that it's not too overwhelming. We're just gonna work on this style snap. I will show you a couple of other types that you can get into. Um, but one of the things that I would recommend if you have a snap setter, a rivet setter, um, whatever you wanna call it, or if you're considering getting one, start basic. Don't get overwhelmed and don't start buying a ton of stuff all at once. That is what I did and it's totally overwhelming and it just gets really confusing. I have separate boxes for the dies. I have bins and bins of snaps and there's so many different kinds of snaps that it gets a little bit confusing as to which dies go with which, what snaps go together, you know, how do I know which pieces go together? And so I would say if you are new to snaps, if you're getting a rivet setter or you have one and you want to get into snaps, Pick one style, get one die set, and just go from there. And as you get comfortable, you can always add on. These I always call spring snaps. Sometimes they call them ring snaps. It all depends on what manufacturer. And I'm gonna show you the sheets that came with each of these that kind of talk about them. Regardless of the name, when you're on the different websites, just make sure that whatever snap you're getting, that you're getting the correct die because every different one has a different die set. And I know it gets super confusing. Where do I start? So today I'm going to start just by showing you the different snaps. Then we're going to get into um, both of the rivet setters on how to do that. If you want some more in-depth information as to why I have to, what my thoughts are on both of the companies, there is a video um, that I will link for you. You can check that out. It was a Facebook Live, and I just kind of talked about, you know, like the good and the bad and what I liked about both of those. I still have no regrets on having two, but you definitely don't need two of them. So I'm going to grab my snaps, and we're going to get started. So the snaps that I've used on both of these wallets, the Daybreak as well as the Sydney, those I always call spring snaps because that is what they're often referred to. However, sometimes you will also see them called ring snaps. I don't really know why they're called two different names, but you know, two different manufacturers. These are the sheets that I got with both of my rivet setters. So this is from Gold Star. This right here calls it a ring snap. These are the ring snap dies and it shows you the different pieces that we will go over today. This is from Cam Snap and Cam Snap calls the same exact thing utility spring snaps. So I think the words are really interchangeable. It just depends on the company. But as you can see here from these little charts, there's so many other things that you can do aside from rivets. There's different kinds of snaps. Um, and I have a couple here too. So the ones that we're gonna show in this video that we're gonna talk about today, these are called a single cap. The reason is this is the cap right here and there's only one of these. You're just gonna have this on the outside. It's gonna face towards the good side of your project. On the back here, behind this and also over here, behind this, there is a post and I'll show you this is what the post looks like. So it's this little piece right here. Not horribly ugly, but it's not the prettiest thing to look at. So that is what's going to be behind these pieces back here because this is meant to be a single-sided um, snap. They do also have double cap. So that all that means, it's the same kind of a snap, okay? Same, um, you know, principle here with the socket and the stud, except you're going to get two caps. 
So if you're making something that you're going to see both sides of this, let's say you're putting this onto a key ring, for instance, that you're going to you know, loop over something and you wanna have two nice sides, you can also do a double cap. It's going to go on the same way, but you're going to need a different die set. So again, just remember every single type and size of snap, you need a different die set. So that's a double cap. We're not gonna do these today, okay? I'm just gonna stick with this. I think this is the most versatile and it's gonna be the easiest to show you a side-by-side -side comparison. There's also something like this, which is often called a pearl snap. The reason is this does not look like a pearl, but a lot of times this has that um, kind of mother of pearl look, but it has this style ring back here. And the snap itself is a little bit different. It has, instead of dipping down like this one does, it has kind of that little nub in the middle there. This is a, again, a different style snap. So just so that you can see the difference, this I could use in the same fashion because I don't really wanna see that. I don't think that's the prettiest, but this um, does not have a, like a center part that needs to be um, depressed like this one. It actually has little prongs. They're like little teeth that stick in. So with this, we don't make a hole. We push it through and then add the snap. So that's just a different style snap. Again, pick one, stick with that one, and then kind of expand from there. Because once you get into these, you're going to want them in every color that you can find. You're going to want to add them to everything and it will help you to get used to the idea of it and how to put them in if you keep doing the same one over and over again. I don't install snaps every single day. Right now, the past couple of weeks, I've been using a lot of snaps because I've been making samples, so I'm pretty comfortable doing it. If I put these away and I don't use them for a few weeks or even a month or so, I kind of have to start over at square one, remind myself what, piece, what pieces go with what. So I always have a finished set around, whether it's in a wallet or just a little sample. That way I can always go back and refer to it. So I keep little pieces like this kind of handy. Sometimes I'll even put them in with the die set. So let's go over the parts of the snap. There's no quiz. You don't have to remember the names of them. But if you understand what parts go together, it may help you when you're assembling your pieces. So on both of these wallets, just to also say this, um, the the portion right here, the um, I guess we'll call it the finished side, the nice side, that is going to go on after after your pieces are finished, like after my flap is done and after my little um, tab here is done. These pieces right here that it's going to snap into, those kind of have to be added as we're going along in our assembly. So in the daybreak, I finish putting all my card pockets in and before I close the wallet up, it's time to add this. On this one, I'm going to get my card pockets prepared, but before I add them on, I have to add this piece on. So you kind of just have to know when and where you're adding your different snaps. So let's take a look at the different pieces that go with a snap. So I have here the four pieces and I have them in two you know, pairs because those are the pieces that are gonna go together. So let's start here. This again is going to be on the front part and I'm just gonna keep one of the wallets right here just so that we can see. So the first part right here is your cap. Sometimes it's called a button. This is the finished part. This is the part that you're going to see on your project. So right here, okay? So this one's a rainbow. This is the gunmetal. On the back here, this has a little um, post, just a little post like that. This is going to be kind of squished down and depressed using the rivet setter when it's added onto this piece right here. Now, again, depending on um, where you get them from, sometimes this is called the female half, sometimes this is called the socket. Um, it really doesn't make much of a difference, but just know that behind your cap is always going to be this one. And you're going to set these together so that this looks like a little bowl. You want it to sit on top of this one like that. That's how it's going to go into your finished project. So when you turn this over, and it kind of bumps up a little bit. I don't know why, but sometimes my brain says that's the right way, that that's how it's supposed to go, but that's actually not what you want. You want this to look like a bowl, to sit on top of your um, cap right here. And when I put this into my rivet setter, the top part of the setter is going to push this post and flatten it out. It's gonna squish it right out so that it holds the pieces together. So let me zoom this in here. So if you can see, 
it's kind of flattened that out. So now there's, you know, there's room in here. I can put my, my finger in there because this part has to snap to the other part. So that little part right there, that is going to get pushed down using the rivet setter. <clears throat> also very important when you're doing anything like this, you want to make sure that you have the correct size for your pieces because if the cap does not fit, let's say that the, your, let's say that this is bigger than the pieces you're using in your rivet setter, and this will make sense in a minute. This is not going to sit flush. It's not going to have a place to sit, and you're probably going to get some dents. It might come off. It's not going to properly um, squish down. I don't think there's any better term than squish. Uh, and you also don't want to use one that's too big because, again, this can move around in that piece and it's not going to properly work and you could get some dents and some scratches and you don't want that. So you always want to make sure that whatever size you're using, you have the correct die style and size. So on this side over here, and these are our other two pieces. So this right here is the post. Now in the sample that I showed you here with the double cap, the post is actually with a cap on the other side, where today we're gonna use this style. So the post, that's the back of it. That's the part that's going to be back here. You're not really going to see that in the finished project. It's like way back there. And it's not meant to see. You're not meant to see that part unless you're using the double cap style. This is kind of a hidden part. So we have our post, and then we have right here, either the male part, depending on who, where you got it, or the stud. So we have this little piece right here, and you can see there's this ridge right in the middle here. That's the part that we want to face up, just like on here, because that's what snaps into the bowl on the other side. So the male to the female, the stud and the socket, or the bowl and the thing that goes in the bowl. So this piece right here, your post, that's gonna go on here. And again, you have your die that's going to push that post down and it push those pieces together, just like right here. So you can see there it is right in there. And it has kind of, you know, ballooned that out, pushed it out and flattened it. And that's what's keeping this in place. So this isn't gonna come off. This one right here, this sample, I only used one layer of cork. I would always recommend that you have at least two, something heavy. If you're using fabric, you want to put some interfacing. You want to make sure that you have something sturdy because this is in your wallet. This is going to be open and closed all the time. You're going to be, you know, getting your cards out, opening, closing. You don't want to pull on this and have this pull right out of the piece that you have it in. So I would always recommend double layer of cork or you know, fabric that has a nice piece of interfacing, something really sturdy. So now that we have our pieces here, the only other thing that I use aside from my rivet setter is my hole punch. And I have that right here. Now you can get punches and punch sets that for each of your rivet setters. I don't love them. And the reason I don't, um, honestly, the Gold Star is not great. It doesn't always punch through that well. The Cam Snap has a really nice punch set but it's one more thing that I have to keep switching out. I would rather just set my snap with the setter and use this. You don't have to have this, it's totally optional. If you would rather use, um, you can use like a stiletto, you can use, again, the punches that come or that can be ordered for your rivet setter. I like this one, it is $20 on Amazon. It's the Pro Master. There's the name right there. I have ordered some others, some cheaper ones. They did not work very well. Spend the 20 bucks and get this one. It comes with extra plates because as you can see, it's gonna start to get some little dents in here from using it. And I use the 2.5 setting for pretty much everything. It's a nice size hole. It's not too big. You can see some of these are a little bit on the large side. And if I use something too big when I punch the hole, there is a chance that I can rip the snap through and I don't wanna do that. So I use the size that's just big enough for the pieces to fit into. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my gold star. We're gonna start with that one. I'll get my dies and I will show you how to get this all set up. Okay, so for no particular reason, I just grabbed the gold star. I'm gonna use that one first and show you those pieces, and then I will do the same snap using my cam snap setter. So I have my ProMaster here. This is what I'm gonna make my holes with, and I have some scraps of cork. That's where I'm gonna put my snap today. But let's go ahead and talk about the different dies 
and how each of them is, you know, is going to work with this. Now I have one little baggie here. This is my, you know, 12 and a half single cap snap. I keep all my pieces in here. If you want to separate them in that bag so that you know the pairs that go together, you can do that. So I marked these with a purple Sharpie um, just so that I always know which halves go together. It's just a little bit easier that way. So let's go ahead and take a look at how these are used for each of the pieces. And then I'll put them in the die or in the setter and we'll go ahead and add a snap. So I always start with the cap part. I really don't have any reason why, but it's just the one that I always start with. So I'm gonna move these pieces over and let's take a look at our two pieces and what we have here. So this is going to be for the cap. This is going to be for this half right here. So it's gonna be the cap and the female part, the little bowl or the, um, the socket, okay? So what you're going to have here is first, this is going to be for the cap. So you can see it's a very shallow piece and it just fits your cap really nicely. And that is exactly how it should look. It's not moving, it fits in there nicely. If this was too big, it would be hanging off the edge. And if this part was too big, it wouldn't be able to center it. We wanna make sure that we always have the correct size. So this is a 12.5 12 12 millimeter snap. This is the 12.5 millimeter set. So that is going to be for my cap. And then on this side, I've got this one right here. It's got this little nub in the middle, okay? And this is going to sit inside of this part right here, the socket, and it's going to sit right in there real snug and it's going to push that post down of the cap to kind of flatten it out and adhere those together. So one half has the screw, one half just sits in the base. And so I'm gonna put those in. It doesn't usually matter which side you do first, but sometimes it's easier to do the screw side because you have to put it in and then turn it. So when I'm putting this part in, I'm just gonna turn it until it stops. You do not wanna over tighten that because what's gonna happen is if you over tighten and then you keep pulling the handle and pulling the handle, you're going to keep pushing that further in and it can get stuck. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I did that the first time because I thought, well, I don't want this to be loose. I wanna make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And I turned and turned and I tightened it as much as I could and then I couldn't get it out. And then I had to try with a pair of pliers and then I had to ask my husband and nobody wants to do that. So just turn it until it stops turning, that's tight enough. This part right here is just gonna sit in the bottom. And there's a little screw right here that you can tighten or loosen as needed, just like that. I don't use a screwdriver for it. I just, you know, will tighten it very slightly because I want to be able to loosen that whenever I need to. And a lot of times I don't even touch this because this is gonna be sitting on the table. It's gonna be sitting down. I'm pulling this half down. So this really isn't gonna go anywhere. So I'm going to take my two pieces of cork just so that I can, um, you know, this is just for demo. So this would be either my flap or my tab right here, um, whichever part of my wallet is like on the outside. And I'm going to take my Pro Master. I'm on setting 2.5 and I'm just going to push. And again, if I was making an actual project, I would probably mark this so I knew where I wanted to have that hole. Get rid of those little pieces. So I'm going to take my cap. I'm going to push that through. That is going to be on the correct side, the right side. So when we look at, again, this wallet right here, the daybreak, it's the cap is going to be on the front of my flap. On the back of the flap is going to be the other half, the socket. So I'm going to take that right here. And again, this is going to sit on here like a little bowl. We don't want it this way, we want it this way. The flat part of that half should be sitting flush. It should be sitting nice and flat with my cork. So now what I'm going to do, and I'll show you, and then I'm gonna have to stand this up, is I'm gonna take this and my cap is gonna sit right here. And when I pull the handle down, that little nub on this part of the die is going to push that flat. So let me stand this up. There's really not a great way to do this view, but I can't do it on its side. So I sit that in there, make sure my pieces are ready to go and give it a really good squish, just like that. And sometimes this happens, it gets kind of stuck in there, just pop it right out. And it should not be distorted out here or out here at all. If it is, you might be using the wrong size die. I have not distorted this half and that's exactly what I want. 
So there is that part, that's all done. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna take these pieces out so that we can do the other half. So I just pop that out and see how easily that unscrews. The first time when I over tightened it, I realized I had made a very big mistake and I wasn't sure if it was ever coming out. <laughs> so don't do that. So here are the other two pieces, okay? And there's the other two parts of my die set. So this again is gonna go on the bottom and this part with the screw is gonna go on the top. So this part, instead of looking like the cap, this is just flat and it has this little nub right here. That is going to hold my post. So my post is gonna sit on there because I don't want the post sliding around. If I tried to use this half, it might not sit in the right spot. So that little part right there, that is holding this in place, okay? This is going to go through to here to my stud or my male part. Now this looks very similar to the one that we used before. You can see they look very, very similar, but this one has a rubber ring on it. The reason is when I squish the post down of that other part, I don't want to hurt this little ring right here. So that is gonna go inside of that part. Let me do this one. And that's how those two are gonna go together. So that's how they're going to sit in the rivet setter and then they're going to push into each other. And you see how they're not moving? See how that's not falling out? That's because I have the correct size. So what I'm gonna do here is try to get that out. Probably shouldn't have done that. There we go. I'm gonna put this half in. Again, just twist until it stops. Take the bottom part, put that in just like that. I'll take that screw out a little bit. I'm gonna grab my cork again. I'm gonna pop a little hole in here. All right, and I kind of just wiggle it for a second just to make sure it goes through. And when I was talking earlier about the different sizes here and not wanting to go too large, when I put this post through, and the post would be on the back, can you see how nice and snug that is? Like it's not even coming out. That's what we want. Let me show you. Let me just do this real quick. I'm gonna move this over to the biggest setting, the 4.5. And I'll do that on another little scrap of cork. So when I put this post into that large of a hole, it, it's not staying in there. It doesn't want to stay. And you see how big that opening is. This could rip and this piece could come through because now the opening is a little bit too big. And over time, it's gonna stretch and it's gonna pull through. So that's why you don't wanna use too large of a hole. So I have my appropriate size here. All right, 2.5. So this goes on the back. This part is not gonna be seen. So when I look at this wallet right here, I can't see that part. It's back here. It's hidden underneath the pocket. Then I'm gonna take my stud right here, the male part. And again, there is a flat part back here. That flat part should be flush. It should be sitting just like so. Now I'm going to put that on here. So this little hole right here sits on that nub and this is going to come down. The center part is going to push that post down and that rubber ring is gonna protect this part. I'm gonna stand this up. And again, push that down. Okay, pop that out. And now I have my front half, I have my back half, and there we go. Nice tight, there's nothing better than that sound, that nice snap. So there they are, and you can see it's nice and secure because I have two layers of cork. It snaps really well. Nothing has, you know, nothing shifted when I was using my press. Nothing was the wrong size, so everything is perfect. Because remember, if you're giving these away or selling these, you don't wanna have a defective snap because once these are in, and once they're in a finished wallet, it's kinda of hard to fix that. So you wanna make sure that you have a nice working snap that's not gonna rip through. So I'm gonna grab my cam snap get those dies, and we're gonna do the same thing all over again, and I'll show you what it looks like on a different press. So I have my cam snap setter here, and I have my dies and my snaps again. I have them you know, separated. Again, I have marked these two pieces, which they're a little bit darker, so it might not be as easy to see, but I marked those with a Sharpie so that I know that that half goes together. Um, I found it a little bit easier to mark on those than those. 
Again, put them in separate bags if that helps. Do whatever you need to do to make this process easier. The more you do these and the more you do them um, you know, consecutively, the easier it gets. But if I put this away and come back in a couple of weeks, I'm going to forget which pieces go together. So what I have here, I did leave my gold star pieces out just so that we can kind of take a look at those. So again, half number one, I have this part right here of the die that goes with the cap. So there's my cap. Again, that's gonna sit nice and flush in there. So that looks very similar to the gold star, okay? Same concept. Then I have right here my socket. So this, again, looks very similar to the gold star, just a little bit wider, but it's that same little kind of nub. So again, that's going to sit on there, the little bowl, and that's gonna make half number one. Then I have my other two pieces right here. This one looks similar. It's a little bit longer, this little um, prong right here, a little sharper. There's the gold star in comparison, but very similar in you know, theory. Here is the post, and the post is gonna sit right on there. And then this is the part, this one always looks a little bit weird. So having two rivet setters, this always throws me off. If you only have one, this doesn't matter to you. But when you look at both of these, you can see that little nub part in the middle. The gold star has a rubber ring, to give it some flexibility around the, um, the stud right here. This one has this spring and it kind of opens. I don't know if you can really see that, but this part opens and the spring allows it to open up. So it's the same principle. One has a rubber ring, one has a spring on it. So I'm gonna get these out of the way. We don't need Gold Star right now. And now I have my pieces, so we're gonna start all over again and do the same steps that we did before. So I have two scraps of cork right here. I have my ProMaster set on setting 2.5. I'm gonna make my hole, kind of wiggle that. And you get all this fun little confetti that you get to clean out afterwards. So now that I have that, I'm going to take my cap. My cap goes on the correct side, the right side. Turn that over and I'm going to take my snap here and make it look like a little bowl, let it sit. So that is ready to go. Now I am using the same exact snaps because they're the same size as these dies as well as the Gold Star. Every company not only sells their own die sets, they sell their own product to go with it. I believe that I bought these from Gold Star. I'm pretty sure I did when I first bought my setter because that was the one I bought first, the purple one. But because they are the same style snap and they fit in these dies, I am able to use them. That does not always happen. Each of them have some pri proprietary um, you know, designs. Like Cam Snap has some really cool things that you cannot get with Gold Star and vice versa. Gold Star has more basics, I would say, more of like your real standard pieces where Cam Snap gets into some of the rainbow color and they have you know, different um, styles of snaps that you can't get elsewhere. Just remember, if you decide that you also want two of them, it's not an interchangeable thing. Or if you have one and you decide to buy a different one or someone gifts you one, you never know, maybe you're really lucky and someone says, here, I don't use this anymore. They're not interchangeable. That's the one downfall. Um, and the reason I have both is really just to do these videos to show you guys. I do use them both, but I really do lean more towards the gold star and I don't have a reason why. It's just the way that it is. Um, so cam snap we're going to set it up the same way the only difference there is this little piece right here this little adapter that has to be purchased separately and that always has to be in here so this does not come out this is not an interchangeable thing we always want to leave that in in order to use the press i'm not sure why it's not part of the base i'm not really i don't understand that but it is a part that you do have to have you need this adapter so i'm going to take Again, this half right here for the cap, that's gonna sit right in here. And I'm gonna take this part that has the screw and I'm gonna screw that in. Same way that I did before. Just tighten until it stops turning. Okay, not gonna go too far. Now I'm gonna take my pieces. I have my cap right here. I have my socket or my female half right here. Flat part is sitting down. This is going to go in here and without hitting the camera, turn this up and push that down. Okay, turn this. 
So there is that half, just like before. So that again would be just like this little tab right here. So that's all done. I'll set that aside. Now I'm going to take these pieces out. Oops, come here. And do that one more time with the second half. So I'm gonna take this that has that little pointy prong, drop that in and take this one that has the screw. I don't know why I have a harder time screwing these in. Maybe because of the angle I'm working. So there's that. Stop when it stops. I'll take my two pieces of cork. Punch my hole. And then I'm going to take the post on the wrong side, the back side of my project. And I'm going to take the stud or the male side. We want the flat part towards the back. We want this little cup right here to fit inside of the bowl. That's gonna sit right on here, just like that. That's gonna come down and depress that together. And there we go. Okay. Same concept as the gold star, just looks a little bit different. So now I've got snap half one, snap half two, and I push this one really hard. It's kind of warped that a little bit. You don't have to push that hard. And there's my snap. So you want to hear that nice, solid click. Like you really got your pieces stuck in there together. So now looking at these, they look exactly the same. They go in exactly the same. You can't tell the difference between the rivet setters, but Again, you're going to wanna just you know make sure that whatever you're ordering, that you're ordering the correct dies. These all have to be sized and they have to be the correct style. What I find is that when I am on the Gold Star site, when I pull the little drop down menu and I decide I want to do these single cap snaps, I decide on what I want, I pick my color, and underneath that, it's going to say, do you need this part? Do you need the press? You can say no, because we already have it. Do you need the die set? And I can say yes. So now I can get my snaps and my die set, put them in the cart, they all come together. On cam snap, it's a very similar method. You're gonna pick your snap, add that to cart, and then down underneath that, there's a little um, different colored word where you can click and it will say tools. And when you click on that, it's going to bring you to the correct dies. Same principle, works you know, exactly the same. Just again, make sure that you get the correct pieces and don't overwhelm yourself. Let me show you, let me just show you this because I get a little excited. And when I get excited, I buy a whole lot of things. And so I just have all these different sets. And I am not even sure if I have all of the dies for each of these. I'm not sure where any of them came from, but I just got really excited putting in snaps and I just kept buying snaps over and over and over again. So don't do this <laughs> unless you really want to stress yourself out. And earlier I showed you uh, this one right here, which is kind of like a pearl snap with that little part right there, just so you can see how that looks. And this is why you need different dies for everything. That's what that looks like. So it's got those little prongs. Same idea, it's still a snap, but totally different style. So just make sure you're not getting yourself too confused. I know I've said it about 100 times in this video, but trust me, um, I have gotten myself very overwhelmed. I need to go through all of these, check my measurements, see what I have, and see if I have the dies for everything, because I'm really not sure that I do. Um, so I think that's it. That's where I'm going to stop for today. I do have on order from Cam Snap some plastic snaps. Those should be in soon, and I will do another video for that. So maybe when you're watching this, it will already be available. And I'm going to continue these kind of little lessons with the rivet setters, showing you how to do different things. I have a couple of videos about rivet setters on the YouTube channel. You can go ahead and just look under that playlist. I keep adding you know, things onto there as I play with it more. It's a super fun tool, not necessary for bag making, but it really does make some things easier and it's just fun to play with. And look at these cool things that you can add that you can't do without one. So not necessary, but you might be thinking, maybe I need a uh, you know, present, maybe some, I have a birthday or a holiday coming up. 
it's not a bad gift to ask for because it was it's something you'll definitely use. I bought it to put in rivets. Now I'm obsessed with snaps. I'm sure I will find something else that I really like, um, you know, doing with these as well. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I will um, try to link the video where I talk about the comparison between both of the presses and you can always check that out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. You can click the little notification bell. I upload at least once a week, if not more, and I'm always happy to hear your ideas. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.